I was reading an article, a passionate invective, really, written by someone who deplored, to put it mildly, the condition of our economy and our society as well. Gone to hell in the good old handbasket, you might say, that was his take. He felt that a new class of people had been created, had created themselves, in fact, a royal class, a group of individuals who can do what they please without any real consequences, at least as far as they are concerned. They're bulletproof or Teflon-coated, whatever you want to say, invulnerable. They wreak holy hell on others, but don't suffer for it. They can behave badly and ignore what others may think. They can act illegally and find a way around the law. They can and do feel morally and even spiritually superior to everyone else. They have everything, and they think they have everything because they have earned it, and they deserve it. They are the upper class. They are above all censure. And the author of the article said, what a shame this is. 250 years after we kicked out the British, that here we go again. We've returned to the very antithesis of that beautiful democracy we were trying to achieve, namely the class system, in which some few are royalty with all the privileges that entails, and everyone else, the great unwashed, is not. Some people, simply put, are better than others. I understood, certainly, the author's outrage and disappointment, but I didn't share his feeling that history had taken a sudden turn, a savage betrayal. Because as far as I know, the royal class has been an integral part of America from its inception, throughout its entire history, and up to this very day. The Founding Fathers were not some ragtag, random bunch of freedom fighters. They were royalty. They didn't just have a dog in the fight, they had whole kennels. They had enough sense not to call themselves royalty, to shun titles, taking their cue from Washington, who declined to be king. But they were royalty, all right. And they set up a government in the form of a republic, of the people, by the people, and for the people, but nothing could completely disguise the fact that they were royalty. Mount Vernon and Monticello remain as tip-offs to the kind of lives they led. They had huge estates and household staffs, servants, slaves. They were royalty. And the economic system, capitalism, continued to produce a royal class. John Jacob Astor, J. Pierpont Morgan, and later on the Vanderbilts, Andrew Carnegie and the Rockefellers, these men and others like them amassed enormous fortunes. They built palaces in which they resided, and they lived a life that was completely removed and contrary to the pathetic existence of the common people. Robber barons was as close as anyone came to calling them royal. The Great Gadsby was a glimpse through a keyhole into the lives of the royal class, and the absolute separation of the classes, and the terrible price that must be paid when you cross, or try to cross, the social boundaries. The Kennedys were royalty, demonstrating quite conclusively that money can give you one kind of class, but not another. We've always had royalty, and we still have it. Computers and the Internet have created a whole new set of royals. The family that made its fortune by selling stuff cheaply, now they're royals. We have Hollywood royalty, too. There are kind of showbiz, fake, rhinestone royalty. And we have sports royalty, the toy division of the class. And we have the people, the author of the article I was reading so despised. The ones who have made their money by trafficking in money. Producing nothing other than their own wealth. Breaking the laws with impunity. Losing billions of dollars covered by government bailouts rewarding themselves with fabulous salaries and bonuses and perks and five or six lavish houses and cars and boats and sleek, glossy private jets and sleek, glossy women, basically anything you can imagine or ever dream of having, they've got it, two or twenty of each. They flaunt it because that's what the royals do. Back as far as time reveals, the kings and queens, the pharaohs, the sultans, the lords and the ladies, they have all loved their bling. Politicians are perhaps the low rung of the royal class, the Bushes. They are the butlers, maids, and footmen of the royals. 
public servants, that's what they're called, and that's exactly what they are, the servants of the rich. They do their bidding, but in return, they get to live the good life. If you want to believe that you live in a pure democracy, where all men and women are equal, that's your choice, you are free to do it. But in order to sustain that belief, you will have to ignore the world around you, which is also understandable.